Hello YouTube, Joe from Joe's Shop. I figured today we would look into band saws and how to make them dust free. This one did not come with a dust collector on it. It's from the early six, mid 60s. So I guess they didn't think of that yet. But I will show you how you can put one on your saw and make it literally dustless. Let's have a look. Let's have a tighter look at what we need to do here. This white guy here is what we've added. And let's get into that view from underneath. Okay, so we'll start by taking this out of here. I'll show you how this works here. It just simply removes this easy. And here's what you have. Okay, now this part there's no reason you need to make it out of quarter inch styrene, although you could if you wanted to. I would suggest making this out of something easier like quarter inch plywood. But this goes in something like this. Come on, which side? There you go. Alright, and stays in on its own. The thing that uh, you need to be concerned with is that you have some ears, some sides that go past where the blade is. The blade is where this hole is here, right up against this wall. All right? So the blade is encompassed by the vacuum. Most saws have a ejector chute way at the bottom where the band saw comes around at the very bottom of its radius. And I think that's a little late to be catching the uh, mess because I believe a lot of it will be in your shop by then. This way, as long as you're not hogging really hard with the blade up at one foot, it catches almost everything, which is pretty cool. Keeps the shop nice and clean. I don't want to be breathing it, and you guys don't either. The next thing we'll look at is what it looks like from the top to kind of give you an idea how it's surrounding the blade. Now here you see, plainly see, this is its... Where it, where it hangs at this point right here. So our main vacuum is starting exactly where the side of the blade is. Immediately, the second it starts cutting something, the vacuum is working on it. So it gives it time to pull that out of the airstream before it gets down too far into the saw and makes a mess everywhere. That's my theory anyway. No, it really does work. I've had this for about 30 years on here, and it works really well. So once again, why not share it? Another thing that uh, I'll mention is you only need a friction fit on your hose. This piece doesn't need to fit inside here any more than just a quick friction fit because all those hoses are, almost all of them are tapered. So here's a closer look at what's going on here. I have a little diverter on this side again to make a little more vacuum is all we're really doing here couple of hooks on either side just keep it from falling off while it's in and deburred inside edges where the vacuum is coming in so the vacuum can come in smoothly okay I'm sorry I'm a freak show all right so that's really how it's all done a pretty simple gig again why not whip it up out of some quarter inch uh, plywood and make it simple get out some CA super glue some quarter inch plywood. First thing you got to do is make yourself a template. I made mine out of cardboard I started with and once I was done with that I moved up to some thin plastic. That worked good and then I moved up to this, my a thick one. And that's how it was done. Let's have a look at some other things that we've done to the saw to make it better. Number one is this. They used to give you a throat plate that was really thin. Really thin. And if you got your blade into any plastic and it started gumming up a little, it would try to suck the throat plate along with it because it was just lightweight. This one's heavy, and it doesn't do that anymore. And I appreciate that a bit. If you do that, you're going to have to relieve the back like you see here, or you won't be able to go on angles. Okay, let's have a look at the next addition. Here we have... A little extension table that I put together 
because when I'd be trimming things it would fall off one edge and slam into these pieces here and it made it less than desirable. So what I did here is I put a couple T-nuts behind these on this back side. Then I screwed a piece of UHMW to the front so that when you tighten these bolts really slightly it puts a load on the UHMW strip and that strip sits up against the back edge of this. So you just reach underneath, give it a snug, give it a snug, and you're good to go. Now when you tilt your table, it won't fall off the end. This takes some doing to get it off now. Pardon me, I'm sorry. All right, so that works pretty nice. It's smooth, gives me a little more table room. Now if you need some more room on your table, let's look at the next thing. This is the underside of a 24 inch table. Make it out of what you like. Put your blocks, the width of your table exactly. Screw everything down. And then after you've cut your slit up to where you need it to be, you're gonna find that your table wants to walk left and right like this. And you'll be like, well that's not really useful. But if you do this, where you push one piece in and then the next, you'll find that you can't do anything to that anymore. It's completely locked in and solid. Then these pieces lock to the bottom of your table. You're going to have to do something very slightly different to mount on your model, but the concept is here. Let's have a look at how it fits on the actual saw itself. And instantly, you've got 24 inches to work with, about. So it becomes really handy when you have little pieces falling off the table or what have you, or you have long strips or whatever it is, you get that little extra leverage vantage of the table. Let's see how it locks underneath. Now here we have the actual trapping of the face rail and the rear rail with these twistable pieces that captivate it. All you need to do if you want it to never loosen up is when you make your screw holes, after you've run the screw in once, take the screw out, put a drop of thin CA super glue down into the threaded hole, let that soak in, then run your screw in again and you'll find it has a lot more resistance going in. At which time it shouldn't back out and turn on you anymore so you can use these in this fashion. Let's have a look at what else we've done. Next I'd like to mention this pin that we align the table with. I got real tired of the hey let's go get a wrench and take that out. So what I did is I drilled a hole through it and put a piece of music wire, eighth inch music wire through the bolt. Actually I think that's 093, 330 seconds. But then I had to sand it a little bit because of my attachment of my table that goes on here. Just to take a little off the top and bottom so my table can slide on nice. No big deal. The only important part is this tapered pin. Just so the table doesn't get wonky over the years. Next we'll have a look at what happens to this model bandsaw if you have one. There's a low gear that makes this blade just crawl. And I mean this fast. Really slow. Okay? And sometimes when you put it in low gear, it will pop out and go into neutral. And the way to solve that is this piece right here. 5 eighths thick, 1 and 5 eighths wide, half inch circle, and when you cut the part out of the middle here, make sure that you're a little past half of the circle. Just a hair past. And that way to lock on the shaft. And I'm going to show you how it mounts in a second. Actually, I fibbed. I lied to you. What happens is it goes from high gear, high speed, and goes into neutral on its own. So nothing's happening. It won't, it won't even power up. So what you need to do is get it out so it's back in gear. And just take this clip, put it right over it. And you're all done. It will never slip out again. 
And this is, again, another old part that I made. I bought this saw in the early 90s. And it had the issue, which is why the guy sold it. And right away, I fixed the problem day one and never looked back. Problem solved. Next, we can look at what happens when the table's at a 45 degree. What do you do with vacuum? Well, I made this attachment for the router for some other stuff. And what I do with it is I just put it in sideways in here like this. And I'll just tape it in. Put my hose on and call it a day. So next was the fence itself. What I did with it is I decided uh, I would strip the paint off of it and get the bumps out of it from their spot welding of the pieces that are in between. And then I also put a bottom on it. So this is perfectly flush with the table so you can saw the thinnest veneer you want to saw and it won't go under the fence. So both sides were done that way, polished up, and it really helps. It really helps a lot, actually. Another thing you might consider is polishing the table somewhat. Everybody's got the same table, cast iron, but some of them have light surface rust on top. And if you put your fingers across it a few times, you'll look, you'll see there's light rust on your fingertips. That's going to be on your wood. Sometimes it doesn't matter, sometimes it does. But what's nice is if you polish the surface somewhat, your wood just goes through like it's, uh, I, I don't know, like it's automatically is sawing itself. Because the fence is polished and the surface you're using is polished, it's so much nicer to contour and to do things on the saw. Just thought I would mention that. Last but not least, one thing that was... Uh, usable for me was adding another extension onto the light bar that was here. Once I put the 12 inch extension on where you have to put this in and Mickey Mouse all back here, it seems you don't have enough left anymore to stretch this out. So I added this for more, what do you call it, shadow free cutting, if you will. Works pretty good. So I thought I would mention it. It's one of the last but not least deals. Let me know what you guys think. We'll talk to you soon. Take care.